Hello, this is Joe Jasper with another video on using masks in Topaz Studio. And now I'm going to try a workaround to create a mask from an image that is using the image itself to create a black and white mask that we're going to use to take this image, put it on this background, to end up with this result. And you can see, if we zoom in, how good the edges are here uh, with the fine hairs preserved in places that are very difficult otherwise to get. So let's go ahead. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is come back to this image and I'm going to duplicate it and I might do that a second time just so that I know I always have extras to go back to should I make a mistake. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a black and white to this and then I'm going to go to a curve tone curves adjustment and I'm going to bring up the white point bring down the black and what we're trying to do is get an absolute black and white and of course the eyes and the mouth uh, are black so we're going to have to compensate for that later I'm trying to get rid of all the white in here and try to bring this as close to pure white as possible. Again, bringing down the whites, bringing up the blacks a little bit more. And I'm not going to worry about the log. We can fix that later if we have to. And basically we're going to a threshold-like effect, if you're familiar with that in Photoshop. Uh, and so that's pretty darn good. Um, and we'll use that as the basis of our mask. So to do that, I am first going to uh, apply this so I don't lose what I worked on. And I'm going to go to a color overlay, make it red or some color that's easy to work with bring the opacity up to 100% or so, and then I'll <clears throat> create a mask. And I'm going to use Luma to try to create this mask, and go over to the black part of the image, and you can see we have a mask already. So if need be, uh, we can go down here and adjust these uh, luminosity range, etc. And you can even adjust the contrast. But this is looking pretty darn good. So now I'm going to pick up a white brush. Brush, white. And I'm just going to go over the area of the eyes. And the mouth to complete this mask. And now if you look over here, it looks pretty good. It's not exactly 100% black and white. So what I do want to do is probably bring the contrast of this further. So uh, we'll, we'll watch it here and see what happens. We bring up the contrast or bring down the contrast. So um, I think basically we want to bring that up, but uh, the reason we're seeing the eyes through is we haven't uh, put the overlay uh, <clears throat> opacity all the way up. So that's a good starting point. There are some uh, fine hairs here that uh, we can further define later, but we're already pretty darn good. Uh, I do not want to feather it. I do not want to expand it. Um, Just going to bring that all the way. Okay, so now we have a mask. And we're going to come back to this mask, but I'm going to try to copy and save it now. Copy the mask. And then I want to add another image layer here. And this is, first one's going to be our texture effect. 
which I'd like to blur. So I'm going to come down to Enhance and blur it. And here's the blur menu. And I also might want to enhance it with uh, tone curves or um, brightness and contrast or HSL, which we did before. Let's do that one and just bring those greens and aquas and everything down into a darker place. Perhaps the blues and uh, desaturate that green a little bit. Good. And then uh, another image overlay. Put our fox on top. And uh, click on the mask and see if we can paste. And, oh. Paste didn't work, so I'm going to go back up to this cover, uh, color overlay la layer, click on the mask, go to copy, then come down to the last image overlay then paste, and there we go. We're already doing pretty well. And now we can refine that mask a little bit. By picking up a white brush. And I'm going to start out with it hard so that I know that in here we're... Aha, see it wasn't, it wasn't the best. For some reason it didn't come a hundred percent. So where I know there's solid white and not just the edge of the hair, I can go over with a pretty big hard brush. I also want to bring the log back in. So I'm going to speed through this part. And already we're looking uh, very good. But then if you want, uh, if there's any place that doesn't look quite right, you can use a softer brush to bring stuff in, like here on the tail. I'm going to bring a softer brush in and uh, paint with white again. To, And that's starting on the solid part of the tail. Letting it spill over onto the little hairs. If I go too far, I can come back with a black brush. Bring the softness up even more. And the same thing around here. Now you see I'm getting a little orange in this area, but I'm bringing back a lot of those nice fine hairs that we liked. So I'm going to switch over to a black brush and go from the other side. Like so, and it takes that orange color right back out. Uh, so there we go. Uh, we created a mask from an image. It helps to have a contrasting image. You can use the luminosity if the contrast is from dark to light. You can use a color if you have a different colored background. So for example in portraiture with a color substitution, uh, excuse me, a color uh, sensitivity mask uh, to substitute a background.